True enough. Soon I'll bring your head before your coward of a father. Rewind prevails! Show some style. Fight like a man. The blood of a true defender of this land will protect me. I know. It hurts, doesn't it? Come on, Reed. Try something else. Why does simple light burn you so much? <laughs> your poisonous bite is useless on me. Close your eyes. This is gonna hurt. So true light will cleanse you! We are the guardian of justice. Prewin shall prevail. You can't accept the fact we're not enemies, can you? We always have been, and we always will be. Of all the evils that threaten mankind, your kind are the worst. I was only reborn for a few minutes before you and your men hunted me down like a beast. You were only reborn for a few minutes. And you'd already taken the life of an innocent woman. There is no way you'll ever let me be, McCollum. You'll always hunt me down, won't you? There is no escape, Leech. Kill me now. For there is no way you can sway me to your ideals. <sighs> That's where you're mistaken. What do you mean? I'll spare you, McCollum. I'll offer you the mercy you never offered me. What is this ruse? This is no ruse, McCollum. This is me letting you go. After all, you and I are both trying to save this poor country in our own way. I'll kill you, Reed. Next time we meet, I'll end you. See? Progress already. You called me by my name. Until the next time. Goodbye, Hunter.
Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. How are you tonight? Haven't you heard? Dr. Tippetts is dead. Yes, I know about Corcoran's death. I'm sure Dr. Swansea will provide a solution. Dr. Swansea has asked me to replace him. Dr. Tippetts, I mean. Since he considers I was already doing his job. Dr. Tippett's job. But without the official title, of course. Sorry. All of this is so sudden. Do you require medical assistance, nurse? I will be fine. As soon as I can get some sleep. Nurse, you won't be able to help people if you're sick. Take this, and do try to get some rest. I'll try, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Snake! I had proved my value. I could have done so much more. Traitor!
Last warning, sir. Not a safe place right now, sir. Yeah, So Prewin never left Doris's theater after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters. It's locked, all right. Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence.
Remember your vows, friend. It's locked. Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. Edgar. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Punctured lung, broken ribs, and internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Jeffrey McCollum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... dare to attack us in the open. What b became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. 
Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. I think you're hiding something, Edgar. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Uh, Jonathan, I, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. Why would the guard of Prewen believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession? Because I offered you shelter in my hospital. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why is the guard of Prewen so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll has next to no intelligence on him. All I know is that he's supposed to be the oldest of all the British vampires. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No, I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. The terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother. She seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. 
There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbury's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my you research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. Yes, Edgar, you're about to die. I won't say it's fair, but I can't say you don't deserve it. Your words hurt deeply, Jonathan. But they come from a friend. I... I helped you, remember? Yes. I remember. The second I saw you in that bar, oh, I knew we would accomplish great things, you and I. I thought you were a vampire, until you brandished that cross. <laughs> you looked so lost when you opened that door. For a few seconds, I thought you were there to kill me. I think we were both afraid. And now, I feel true fear. Is there an afterlife? What will become of me when I'm dead, Dr. Reed? I really cannot say, Dr. Swansea. Uh, uh, in the end, life betrays us all. 